Um, really, I'd expect Fencer to have done a bit of a warm up before. Yes, yeah, yeah, ideally, yeah. like I was saying, yeah. I get Fencer here to come through the door just 30 seconds before the lessons do start. Yeah. For me, I, I, I get here at least 15 minutes yeah. before they should start, so they're ready to warm up. Yeah. So, the first bit I'd think of is calibration exercise because you've got to get used to hitting, yeah. manipulating the blade, and things like that. And you could do this in a variety of different ways. You know, we can start very simple, just extended hit, you know. And it's important to set the distance right for the fence to hit so they don't have to move forward or anything. You can see that very simple one like this. And for a more capable fence, so this can become this exercise. So just be very easy hitting. Introduce slight changes in rhythm. There are no changes in distance at this stage, but we can introduce that little change in rhythm. In distance, right? I think this also helps the fence in the back. If you're too much that's stationary, it builds tension and legs change and so on. A bit of movement, a bit of relaxation. So, we, so I think of that as a calibration of so stuff. In addition to that, Harry's and Repost, it can serve the same purpose. It gets familiar with finding the blade and hitting and so on. So a very easy presentation. A bit of yeah. So once I've seen the parry, I've seen how the face is parried, it's not hard to evade that parry. You might have to stop and look at some of the things. And as was mentioned last time, it's actually feeling the blade into the guard and knowing that that's a signal to hit. I think it's helpful. And then we need to do some short lunge. You know, you get quite a bit of debate about this. I mean, there are people who, who try and bash the blade out there practically on their own. They say, well, we shouldn't do this at all. What I find is it gives the tempo of things. It marks this moment of the hit. Right. And it also can simulate the fact that the opponent has tried to parry but hasn't quite managed it, which is characteristic of an attack, isn't it? Yeah. So I think there are a number of elements to this. I say, apart from the tempo of the action, Signals are going to hit effectively. It can also reposition the fence's hand if their hand tends to drop too low. So there are numbers of purposes it can serve. Especially if you don't, when, they, they, when they go in with an arm straight forward, you lift the blade up slightly for them. If you yeah, them. I mean, with some fences whose hand is coming in far too low, I can make it so that they actually have to get their hand up. Yeah. Because they, they can't actually get there unless their hand is up. Yeah. Um, in a more competitive scenario, it can be hard. Failed parry, didn't quite get to the parry. And that's going to be characteristic of a successful hit, isn't it? Because it has to parry, you can't get there. Yeah. Because the timing of the attack is good. Yeah, I, I can remember attending in Hungary quite fervent debates on this particular topic. Uh, yeah, and, and hearing some of the explanations. You know, it's, it's a thing that you've been picking before yourself as a You know, to do it too forcefully and vigorously, I think. So that's sort of what I think of as a calibration of the yeah. lesson. The lesson has started off. There may be some faults that we can look at within that, how the power is going forward, etc. Okay, so now if we get on to uh, a basic structure of what we can do with yeah. within the lesson. And I think this particular set I use, which I use pretty much with all fences, uh, really breaks into the essence of what fencing is, because really what's it about? It's about using feints and deception to overcome this distance problem between yourself and the opponent. I, I'm easily within my reaction time, I can react to anything I'm doing, so I'm not going to achieve 
the hit with speed, they're going to use deception, etc. So the, the essential exercise is step forward with direct feint, and the instruction I would normally give to an experienced fencer, step forward with direct feint and take it from there. But in practice there are three key components that I'm looking for uh, as I'm developing a fencer here. And the first of these we can look at is I take the parry straight away. Yeah. And I use a mix of three parries. And there's a reason for this. I use cart, yeah. I use ceased, yeah. and I use pre. pre. Yeah. Now typically if I'm, if I'm putting in the premium one, bearing in mind an early parry, it might seem a bit perverse to do that. But I'm thinking in terms of I might be going to put in a flick there. Now the significance of this is if you can evade these three parries, you can evade pretty much any other parry. So if I take Octave, it's the same answer as if I've done cards, she's going around the same way. Even if I do something as perverse as set team, it's the same as if I've done the premium. Yeah. So the ability to evade these three parries gives the ability to evade pretty much any other parry. Do you see? So we can look at that next. So if you step forward and okay. Now we're looking for a slow step, slight extension of the arm, uh, and then a more energetic finish to the attack. Okay. The assumption we're making is that she's going to be quicker to get there before I can do that second count. And here, yeah. so at the end of the first step, is the, the arm to be extended or part of it. What I am looking for on that is that the extension of the arm slightly precedes the step. Yeah. Right? This is guiding the thought process of the opponent. Yeah. This is the thing you want to notice it. But it's not going to extend too far. Okay? Um, because you want that acceleration at the end of that. And we're working on the assumption here that this opponent is inclined to take the parry that earlier and, yeah. and will just respond to that. Yeah. Uh, we, we look a bit later as to what happens when we don't respond. You see? Yeah. So you're looking for that slow beginning, arm um, just starting the fourth step, which guides the thought process of the opponent. Faults I look for if a fencer does start the foot first and then extends. The risk is the opponent sees that step forward, decides I'm going to attack. And the referee says attack on the push. Yeah. You have that risk. So, so for me, that's quite an important component so to get that step right with the feint right, not too deep on the feint, uh, and then to evade all these different parries to yeah, have that accelerating finish to the action. Let's see that a few times. Sorry, did my eye. Let's go back again. <laughs> well, we'll just go here for it. I think we're okay. Yeah, that's okay. Carry I take. Okay, so we've got that component. You're carrying quite early, aren't you? Yes, I'm carrying straight away. So you're just going to carry it on the carry. Yeah. Now, obviously, fences aren't always going to do that, going to react to it. Well, the, the variation I like, if there isn't the early parry and there's no other action, you're then going to use second intention counter box. Yeah. Good. Now, uh, I would often, in introducing this, I would, I would, I would say to the fence uh, that they'd be doing this and they'd be getting that, and then I wouldn't respond. And then I can have a discussion with the fence, right? I can say, well, what do you think you should do? Now, a lot of young fences would say, oh, I'll just carry on heat. Yeah. And the question for me then is, well, do you think you'll get the point? Now, some think they will, some think they won't, you see, but we can prove it because I'm going to take a later parry. And then the, the, the debate is that informs the fence, uh, your opponent's going to parry, just a matter of where. So, just going fast is not the answer. This is, this is what we said a moment ago. Speed is not the answer here. So, the second intention counter cost is a good option because it's technically easier to perform for the majority of fences in comparison to taking a very late disengage, which can be a few more advanced right. right. but, but the counter cost is going to be an easier option. So, if you get a younger fencer used to doing this combination, when the, when the parries are early, go round and score. When the parry is much later, do the second intention counter pass. Yeah. And also, because I think second intention actions are very easily neglected by fencers as they develop, yeah. it gets them in that, that mindset where they think, oh, do second intention again. Yeah. Okay, so, so we have that combination. Okay. Now, this particular action, if we go again and look, hit. The thing you'll see here is that fences make it too false. They come in and they go something like this. Now, very easy to see straight away, but I'm not doing it for real. It has to look real. I want it to finish about here, 
just short of the target. It's outside my range of vision. I can't see that point anymore. So I will be fine with the parrot. I, I feel it's a good attack. You'll draw the parrot. And with, with good capable fencer, I as a coach should not be able to tell whether they're genuinely trying to hit me or whether it's a false action. It should always look real to me. And that way, I commit to my attempt to score for the boss and I fall into the second intention trap. Yeah. You see, if it looks false, I might parry. I'm just going to get a bit of politics, I'm not really going to commit to that. And I'm not going to be vulnerable to the counter boss in the same way because I don't trust it. Right, can I ask a question? What if a fence can be in that trap? So a fence can be in that Right? So you've got to draw the power. Yeah. You've got to attempt to draw the power. So don't draw the power. Yes, you draw Right. So do the ten second intention. As, a, as an attacker, apart from second intention, what other options have I got to hit? Apart from going straight to I, I can show you technically how you can do a disengage in that setting. Okay, exactly. Because you, I'm thinking about this, but are you technically too close to this? Well, let's show you why not. There's a few things. One is, she knows what she's going to do. She's decided she's going to do this, so her decision process is quick, it's fast. She's yes. not as if she's seen, been surprised by something, having to assess what it is, decide what to do, and then do it. So, so the reaction time for the counter pulse. Is fast. The other thing, if you look at this, let's say the point is here. Now, if I put my point there, now if you extend and hit, there's all that margin in terms of distance. Do you see that? Yep. Full length of perhaps a glove. Now, that is easily enough for her to guarantee to get that power. But it's not immediately perceptible from my side that actually I'm not within range of getting the hit. Right. So she, she's actually. What is that? That's what, nine inches? Yeah, nine times, yeah, yeah. She's nine inches or so further back. Yeah. But from my side, in the heat of battle, so to speak, I'm not necessarily going to perceive that I'm actually out of range of the cross. And I so say she's going to react fast. Yeah. Because she knows what she's going to do. Another element I would put into this, whereas with the early parries, I'm taking different parries, which yeah. I can do. Your later parry is most of the time going to be cut. Yeah. Because realistically for me to take other parries in this scenario yeah. Yeah. is more difficult. You get some fencers who have a very fast seize and will do seize as a very late action. I can think of a few fencers out there who will do that with very late action, but then yeah, they're very fast for with that action. Uh, that would be a, something else you have to notice. Yeah. But within the context of this lesson, I'm always going to do a as well. I'm always going to do direct props. If she comes in too shallow, there's the risk of me doing compound actions, opening everything up, doing my own second attention yeah. things. And that's why she wants that depth there. Right. So if we look at, now we've got the exercise, we've got combining early parries, late parries, two different options for each variation. We just have a brief look at how that progresses. Just start with a bit further back. Steps into the phase. I take the early parry, round that parry, don't take the early parry. <laughs> Yes, I thought that was going to Let's go here, I'll never do Second intention, and I'm believing that attack looks good to yeah. me. Comes in deep, the point's in the right place, I'm believing that. Yeah, good. Now, we can of course get this movement going on with that, and get um, the fake stuff at different moments. Now, the third element to this, is if I counter attack. Yeah. And, and this is, I think, especially useful for younger fencers. There's yeah. loads of them counter attack, don't they? And when you're when you the attack, you just. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. you need to get used to offensive counter attacks. Yeah. Uh, and what I look for here is an offensive. Oh, I can't see it. Can we go over there? Let's go over there, but let's, let's change the angle of this a bit. Okay, so I do a counter attack. Start, I counter attack, just finishes nice and smooth. Yeah, you see? And that smoothness of the finish is crucially important. Any little hesitation nowadays, it gets in the hands and gets given as much as that. Or if you finish it with a little twist or something, yeah. again, the referee defines that as the counter attack. Yeah. So being able to get that smoothness of finishing the face of the counter attack is quite important. Let's see if we have that combination of three elements. Thank you. 
But the, the reason for doing that is to get them used to avoiding the counter attack and carry on with the hit. Well, then, you know, you've got two lights on the box, haven't you? There. Yeah. Uh, but you put the attack goes to the side. So, so you have a confidence about your attack and you what you're doing. But what you're saying with kids is that because you're doing the counter attack, the tendency is to. Yeah, the tendency is to hesitate yeah. or yeah. try and carry. And you can easily illustrate that Harrigan can be a mistake, not always a mistake, it can be a mistake because if she stops, she's doing the feint, she eye counter, she goes for the parry, compound action, you've given up priority, you've lost the opportunity there. So you can sort of prove that um, responding with the parry isn't necessarily a good idea. But also, it comes naturally, they've learned how to parry, they'll respond naturally with the attempt to parry. If I, if, if, if I can stop her attacking at time, because my stick in my arm out, I don't need to carry it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you want the Spencer to feel to just carry on that attack in an effective way. Now once they've got that element, then you can put other things into it. Okay, so we've got those three elements to our, our lesson. Now this is actually quite a, 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 a considerable number of lessons work before you get to fancy enough to do all these things consistently in the line. Okay. Yeah. But then you can add extra bits to it. For example, I can step back on this one as a camera. Really, there's an extra step, an extra. Yes. She's had to be observant. She has a sense of distance. Does so she step? Does she not step? Did I step in my car? Did I not? Yeah. You can see, so there's more elements coming to this. So this those three elements have got in our lesson. Ah! We have to get it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So we've now had that little change of distance with the pack. Another element I would put in is we've got to bear in mind that these initial powers I'm being sort of lazy. Yeah. She's able to get around the parries. Yeah. Uh, the parry can be more competitive. So she does first and take counter pass in response to my more competitive parry. Yeah. Now, I would suggest this is a sort of coaching skill that's worth developing. Because it's, it's, it's easy to, to, to find that if, you, if you're actually not getting that right, that she gets around anyway. Got to be reasonably confident that you're going to get that parry. Right. She knows I'm going to parry. So she's ready to get around it, but can I do it in such a way that actually she can't do this? No, good fences, they've got to be very hard to get around the yeah. hand. So. so that sharpness in the hand, slight change in time, enables you to do that as a coach. See, there I'm making it. Yep. There's a difference in the way I'm doing it. Thank you. 
going to introduce more subtleties to it. Um, this variation. Okay. Does my cat have a beer? No. So maybe I don't think the cat has sometimes. In order that perhaps the world is at the back. Break it almost. Yeah, absolutely. We say so. Uh, what I look for here is that we haven't done that, but this one for a little bit of this variation. But if we look for here is the fence makes a judgment, is this kind of real? Is it, 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 is it some trick? So we can look at options from there. So for example, if my cat tap looks real, if it doesn't, maybe we are going to take this and get Yeah? So we're just working with the same yeah. um, combination, but we're just putting a little extra bits in it. And also, here's another little, little variation you can have. Because you're not always going to know if it's real or if it's a faint. If you're not sure, you do your faint. Not sure, what about your fish? Because if I knew Carolyn had hit the counter, she's still scored, still her points. Yeah. If I attempt to carry it, it's the point. So it sort of simplifies that variation there. You see, now we have this, this whole lesson going on, can't we? Okay. Yeah. 
you move square on to the fence? You know, it or would you move from here on right to the actual fence? In this setting, uh, I'd probably move more slowly than you're moving. Right. Because actually, I slightly struggling to keep up. In other settings, that's going to work. But yeah, I'd be quite square on at this stage. And I'm not moving really fast. And then the, the, I let her feet separate before I change direction each time. Because if I'm going here, look. Okay. Yeah, so yeah, right. yeah. And then if I give her something to do, yeah. she's probably in the middle of the step. But yeah. 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 You see. So I've then got the movement. She's not struggling to keep up, but this is this is it's easy as a coach to go too fast. Very easy. Yeah. If you see a lot of fences start off doing coaching and they've not done art before, yeah. they'll be doing everything far too fast. Yeah. And you won't appreciate the amount of pressure the fence can be under. Even then, it's quite steady. It can be quite a lot of pressure. You see. Uh, so, so, so slow, slow, slow is often the way. Yeah, you're sort of 
simulating slowly on these tents so the average slides with the lady. Yeah. I actually stayed in the slightly earlier. Maybe I was being there to just react more yes. or less straight away. Right. But uh, uh, the moment your reaction is more or less at the end of the step, yeah. sort of getting towards the middle. So I'm doing more on the arm extension or the movement of the arm. You can only see it happen. Yes. Yeah. But you're showing it. Yeah. You're showing it. Yeah. 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 So there are other settings where you're not showing it. Yeah, you see, yeah. Yeah. So you, you know, it's the same thing you want to do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yes, I can. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Yeah. This is the point where the defence goes off the piece, almost everything that happens. 
down to something that they do. Is that a good film? Yes, of course. But it was of course because, because I'm sure they will do this in the, in the way of defense. So I don't know how yeah. uh, counter-attack, counter-attack, defensive counter-attack. Yeah. You know, I mean, sort of brief, brief combinations we have. Set it down to the fire is counter-attack. If I hesitate or hit, if I go for the blade, disengage, hit. If I see that, I finish, parry, pulse. If I start to rush, it's counter-attack parry. Yeah. So you'll see. Yeah. You know, if I finish short, finds the blade takes over. Ash is pressing action. If I do fake the counter-attack, what should you do? Fake the yeah. 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 All this goes on. And we wouldn't have to say what's happening. She she know what to do or what she should do. Mm. You know, and we can isolate it different elements and work on them. Now you've got from this step forward fake escape, step forward fake back, you've then got a whole lot of tiny range of tactical options. Yes. Um, and it all sort of fits together. You can plot it out on, on a piece of paper. You can plot it out. Yeah. Do this, then this. Yeah. Do you see? So that's where I'm going to go with all that. And this, these are the lessons. Stop with this particular mix of where we are there. And then you can stop. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Alright, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you Getting it right, getting it, getting the hand position like the hand position yeah. right. Okay. You know, I'm not here, I'm here, and he said everything you teach the defence, which you forget as a you know, coach and as a child. But no, it's good. Yeah. 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 I mean, coach is a different thing to fencing, yeah. a different skill. Yeah. It's yeah. the same. But if you've got it from the back of the mind, you're always saying, "I'm going to get that thing right, I'm going to get that thing right." Yeah. 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 Brian James, yeah. Brian yeah. always says. Yeah, yeah, it's like, um, you, you, 
you know, there's this thing. So I'll take a circuit process, just do the pattern. I'll get a from here, and I can do lots. What about if I do? Yeah, this thing, I can do a pretty Yeah, from there. So, and then I start doing that. It wasn't actually all that long ago. And now we get to get fences together each day. So I'm not fast enough. There's, yeah. there's all these little bits that you could discover, yeah. and, um, and then you could just work on verses if you want, you know. Um, so that's that's how I do it. It's like a taxi driver. So. The other question I have for you: When does a parrot become a beat? It's, it's the context of what's been done. Um, because she's done the fake, doing the fake, that's the beginning of the attack. So my action is a parrot. Yeah. The fact that uh, if she's just standing there, I can do exactly the same thing. Uh, and it's because she's not attacking. Right. So um, I'll ask the question in a slightly different way. The difference between being a parrot with regard to blade. So traditionally, yes, I'm you know, as a completely novice fencer. I've seen coaches with a piece of tape on the blade, okay, they put a piece of tape oh, there, or a chalk on the blade, yeah. and I say that a parrot is anything below that chalk. And a beat attack is anything beyond that chalk. Okay. If I attempt to parry the the referee will find that as her parry. Yeah. She may not have attempted to parry. Because yeah. I cannot lose the expected effect of that. Yeah. Anywhere that is, it would be my power. Any other time. Anywhere that's half the power here, the middle of the middle, that can be my power. That can be my power. If I can carry it here, right. that can be my power. Right. right. Now, that's not the beat. Depends what she's doing. It's so she's doing right. If she is doing an attack, yeah. my action has become a power yeah. because of the cost. Yes, it was. Well, preparation here, isn't it? She's just on her own, and I, and I go for the blade. But if I beat it to a guard, that's what I'm saying. Again, if you look in the rule book, if you look in the section of minority, looking for your definition of what a parry is, it's not there. There are many references to the parry business. <laughs>